Hello and welcome to this educational video on patient-controlled analgesia, or PCA. This video is aimed at consultants, doctors, nurses, and medical students who will manage post-operative pain in ward setups. In this video, we'll be exploring how PCA works, where it's most useful, and its advantages and disadvantages. PCA is a method of pain control that allows the patient to manage their own pain relief using a specialized pump that delivers medication. The patient can administer the pain relief medication when the patient feels they need it. The pump is programmed to ensure safety, delivering medication within set limits to avoid overdosing. This is particularly useful in managing post-operative pain, pain from trauma, labor pain, and cancer pain, where patients may need continuous pain relief. Medications in PCA can be administered intravenously, epidurally, through a peripheral nerve catheter, or transdermally. Drugs commonly administered are opioids and local anesthetics, but dissociatives or other analgesics are also options. PCA has proven to be more effective at pain control than non-patient opioid injections and results in higher patient satisfaction. PCA is most often used after surgeries like abdominal or thoracic procedures, but where pain is expected to be moderate to severe. It's also effective in managing acute pain from traumatic injuries such as fractures, or chronic pain from advanced diseases like cancer. What makes PCA unique is that it empowers the patient to control their pain relief without waiting for a nurse to administer the medication. This video will concentrate on intravenous PCA. Let's take a look at the advantages of PCA. Firstly, PCA offers rapid pain relief since the patient can administer the medication as soon as they feel pain rather than waiting for a nurse. This leads to better pain control and, in many cases, higher patient satisfaction. It also reduces the need for repeated injections, which is particularly beneficial for patients who require frequent doses of pain medication. PCA will also increase patient satisfaction and reduce the workload for the nurses. However, PCA also has some disadvantages. The patient needs to be awake and alert enough to press the button when they feel pain. PCA may not be suitable for patients who are confused, very young, or too weak to operate the device. Additionally, there's a risk of side effects such as nausea, constipation, or sedation, which can occur with opioid use. The pump's programming ensures that serious risks like overdose are minimized. Before administering a PCA pump, the doctor must first conduct a thorough pain assessment to understand the cause, intensity, and specific characteristics of the patient's pain. This helps tailor the analgesic approach to the patient's needs. A detailed review of the patient's medical history is also essential, focusing on any respiratory conditions such as COPD or sleep apnea that may increase the risk of complications from opioid use, as well as their neurological status to ensure they can properly understand and operate the PCA pump. The doctor will also assess any history of opioid use, dependency, or allergies to medications typically used in PCA, such as opioids or local anesthetics. Finally, it is crucial to confirm that the patient is physically capable of operating the pump, ensuring there is no confusion, and that they are alert and able to press the button effectively to administer their medication when needed. Let's take a look at the parts of the PCA pump. The first step is to prepare the medication, which has been prescribed by the doctor. In most cases, this will be an opioid like morphine or fentanyl. The medication is placed in this syringe or cassette, which is then loaded into the pump. Once the medication is loaded, we need to program the pump. 
Each PCA pump has a few key settings. Initially, select the category, which is PCA mode. We can press the OK button or the left arrow key to confirm our selection. Next, we select the type of drug. Now we select the desired profile. It can be either a continuous profile or a PCA only profile. Here, I'll enter the prescribed bolus dose and set the lockout interval to ensure the patient cannot press the button too frequently. The bolus dose is the amount of medication delivered when the patient presses the button. I'll also set the maximum dose limit for the hour to ensure that the patient doesn't receive too much medication. The lockout interval is the minimum time between doses and is typically set to 5 to 10 minutes, depending on the patient's needs. Next, we connect the pump to the patient's IV line, use a three-way tap, and keep a running drip ensuring that everything is securely in place. It's crucial to check for any kinks in the tubing or air bubbles, as this could interfere with the medication delivery. The patient should be monitored continuously, and PCA administration by others should be avoided. Now that the pump is set up, I'll explain to the patient how to use it. When you feel pain, simply press this button. The pump will administer a dose of pain medication, but don't worry. It's programmed to prevent you from receiving too much. If you feel like the pain isn't well controlled, let the nursing staff or your doctor know. To summarize, PCA offers a reliable and effective way for patients to manage their pain, particularly in the post-operative period. While it has its advantages in terms of control and convenience, it must be carefully monitored, and it's not suitable for every patient. When used correctly, PCA can significantly improve patient comfort and satisfaction. Thank you for watching. And we hope this demonstration has been helpful in understanding the setup and use of PCA.